Hi, I'm Steve Arterburn, the author of the new book, Regret-Free Living. Uh, I'm really excited about this book because I've written some timely books before, but maybe none as timely as this one. This past Halloween, uh, we dressed up my little two-year-old boy. Uh, I was um, wearing the t-shirt, no, uh, I'm not his grandfather. And uh, we went out and him dressed like Elmo and holding a little uh, Elmo head. It looked like Elmo had been decapitated and they put a strap on it and emptied it out. And Solomon went around begging for candy, uh, which we thought might come in handy later on in his life. Uh, when we got back to the house, it was full of candy. And Solomon uh, asked me if he could have this one, pointing to a, a piece, and then he, and I said yes, and he pointed to another piece. I said yes, and he asked about another one. I said yes, and then he said, can I have all of them? And I said no. Well, I really think that's kind of the way it is with God's will and us, that there are a lot of choices we could make, and God would be happy for us, and we would be in His will. But then we push it, we go to the limit, we overdo it, and we make some choices that cause us a tremendous amount of regret. Now, during this economic downturn, which is a nice way of saying financial disaster, I think we've got more people living in the regret of decisions made along the area of money than ever in my lifetime. So many people wish they had spent their money differently or invested it differently or just hadn't made the decisions they did about the house, the car, or whatever it is. And I want to help them to get out of that regret. And then uh, when you look at relationally, marriages, broken up and, and destroyed by pornography, affairs. Uh, it's, it's epidemic what's going on. And, and people are making choices in that relationship that they regret forever. Um, I don't know of any coach who wants their team to win who coaches like this. I don't know of any coach that goes, okay guys, I want you to get out there and remember how horrible we looked last week. Uh, don't forget how we humiliated ourselves out there on the field and disgraced our families and this school. So get out there and regret that we ever, ever played last week. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, it would be a, a formula for failure. So what I want to do is see people living free of their regret. But there's a balance. We want to live without regret, but we also want to live responsibly or accept responsibility for the things that we've done. So I've tried to help people heal from the regret while also helping them to accept responsibility. And then uh, there's a tremendous amount of material in the book on prevention. How do we make these decisions and choices that will prevent them from being painful and, and full of regret? In Romans 12, 2, it says that we, we can be transformed, live a different life, if we will renew our mind or change the way that we think. And a lot of people have some very poor theology that's destroying them. Uh, theology that says God wants you to walk around in, in burlap and ashes for the rest of your life or walk in shame. And I want to correct those misconceptions, those poor theological issues. Now in my life, two words have always been a problem for me. One was obese, I was overweight, and the other is obey. I never liked either of those. But we end up saying in this book that if you want to live a regret-free life, you're going to have to obey some of the commands of God. You're going to have to comply with what has worked for the most people. And I hope that it's going to bring great freedom from regret. St. Augustine said, in my deepest wound, I saw your glory and it dazzled me. And I'm praying that some people who are hurting uh, and they have some very deep wounds will pick up this book and see the glory of God and be dazzled by his plan to help all of us live the regret-free life.